Hi, I'm Ryan, and in uh, this video, I'm going to be talking to you about the particle system functionality that I introduced to Comfy UI with my node pack. Hopefully I've had just the right amount of caffeine so that I can go into just enough detail. Um, so <clears throat> the nodes, the node pack introduces a ton of functionality and I am continually updating it. The particle systems were one of the first things that I put in. So I'll cover that first. Um, the workflow that I'm going over won't be particularly interesting. It's just to demonstrate the functionality of the particle uh, simulations. If you want some more interesting workflows, see my uh, Civit AI profile. I'm uh, hopefully going to have corresponding YouTube videos for these workflows uh, going forward. All the links I'll put in the, the description. So to the particle systems. So I'll go over how it sort of works as a whole and then I'll I'll touch on the part the particle simulation space particle emitters um, simulation modifiers particle modifiers <clears throat> um, par yeah particle modifiers and then feature I'll touch briefly on briefly on feature driven uh, particle reactions Sounds like a lot, but it's uh, not as uh, complicated as, as it sounds. So the simulation has to occur somewhere, and that place is inside of a mask. So all of the particle simulations happen inside of a mask. So I've got this input video, <clears throat> and I'm using, this is just a mask from color node, so I'm, I'm selecting none of the colors in any of the frames of this video of a square. So we just get an empty mask. And that's, that's what I'll be using for most of the explanations. But for this first one where I'm, I'll show you about particle emitters, uh, I'm going to take a mask of this woman dancing um, and use that for the simulation space. So, <clears throat> now that you know, now that we're here, I'll talk about this. So the particle emission mask, th this node is the main deal for the particle related nodes in uh, the node pack. I'm not gonna go over every, uh, every parameter in detail because every node in my nodes has this help menu that can be accessed by clicking the question mark in the corner of each node. So this will detail for you all of the, the parameters, what, the, what they do, what the node does as a whole, how you, what you use it with sometimes. <clears throat> um, but if you need any more information, obviously visit the, the GitHub page. There's, there's some higher level documentation there. Also, give me a star if you don't mind. Thank you. Um, so this is the main deal for particle simulations. It gives us the space. See, we've passed in the masks from that video of the woman dancing, and you'll notice that there's only about 65% of her here, and that's because of this setting right here, subtract original. We subtracted 35% of the poor lady, and um, this is these four here on the top are common for all mask nodes in my node pack. So whenever we're dealing with masks at all, you're gonna have these things to work with, which allows you to do some pretty cool stuff. The other parameter I'll talk about specifically is this respect mask boundary. And that's the reason I used a lady. It's because when that is enabled, uh, the particles attempt to treat the masked thing as an object in the simulation. So notice they're bouncing off of the boundary of, of the mask. You could like, you know, it, it allows for some pretty cool effects. You could like be pelting her with basketballs or something. So now that <clears throat> talked about the simulation space as a whole, we talk about specifically the particle emitters. So you can have any number of particle emitters and you just chain them together like this. I've used two here. And what's common is to 
have different colors for each particle emitter, maybe, because then you can mask those colors and apply, you know, an IP adapter to a specific color. So it can be useful to have multiple. It's got just particle emitter level settings here, like the position it starts in, the speed of the particles that, that the speed it shoots the particles out at, the rate that it shoots out the particles, etc. Um, yep, and I, I think I already told you, you can chain them together, so you can, you know, as many as you want. Now that I've talked about the particle emitters and this, the simulation space as a whole, can move on to other things you can add to the space. The first of which are static bodies. So, it's often a lot easier to just pass in the shapes that you want to exist in the simulation. But sometimes it can be useful to draw specifically static things. So here I've drawn a fish tank, I guess, uh, you know, in a zero gravity, <laughs> a zero gravity universe we're trying to fill up this fish tank. So it can be useful. You chain, just like the other things, you chain as many as you want. Um, you can do just segments of just lines or you can do polygons. Um, yeah, it's pretty, pretty self-explanatory. You can, again, you just look in these uh, help menus for more specific information. So there are other things that you can add to modify a simulation space, like vortices and gravity wells. So a vor vortex is just a, space, a spot in the simulation that makes the particles swirl around. Simple as that. You can chain as many as you want together. You can change the you can optionally draw the ring and change its color. You just crank this down to zero, the, the draw parameter, and it will become so thin that it doesn't get drawn at all. Here you can see it sort of boop goes away. That's because I messed with the end frame here. On the, it's sort of unrelated, but hey. Next, we got gravity wells. So gravity well can either repel or attract the particles. You see them being attracted here. They gather in the center, repelled down here. You can do the same sort of stuff you can with the, with the vortices in terms of the drawing the ring or not, changing the radius, etc. So th those are simulation level um, modifiers. Now let's talk about particle level modulation. So you can do three types. There's the color, size, and speed. You can chain the three of these together, but you cannot have more than one of each. So that's the difference between the, the earlier stuff that we talked about and this. Um, not, not a whole lot more to say about that. We'll do some fun stuff towards the end with the with part, uh, particle modulators. Then there's also spring joint settings. So this just modulates how the particles interact with one another. And the, the, when I say that, I mean the particles that come out of a common emitter, how they interact with one another. Here, I've got an example here. Notice how they're all like sticky and weird. Yeah. All right, so continuing with particle modulation, I'll touch on this briefly, but one of the things that I've introduced in the nodes is this feature system, which allows you to modulate almost all the nodes in my node pack with features. You extract features from things like audio, motion, depth, color, brightness, time, proximity I'm about to add, it's pretty fun. But we're doing audio here, and I'll go into that in another video or something. There's a, there, there's workflows like this one for the, the flex features uh, on, on my Civic profile, if you wanna check it out. So, took the audio from this square video, and we separate it into the components drums, vocals, bass, and everything else here. 
and I'm trying to use the kick drum. So I've got this frequency filter, isolated the kick drum from the drums. So we isolated the drums and then I isolated further the kick drum. And this is not to make it sound good. This is just to get a good response curve, basically, for the modulation. So, uh, oh yeah, that's a hot track. Okay. So again, I've got the color, size, and speed here, and I passed the audio feature that we've extracted, and it will modulate the target here. It's listed. You get cool effects like this. All right. So I covered uh, the simulation space. I covered the particle emitters. I covered modifying the particle simulation space, uh, modifying the particles. Um, not particularly flashy output here. If you want some examples of how you can make really cool stuff, um, check out my other workflows. I'll make some more videos soon. Uh, yeah. I guess follow me if you want some more extremely esoteric information. Uh, uh, th thanks for watching. Okay.